what I actually went through for the cyber range is I kind of really honed in on the instant response and like the stock analyst I brought. So it's one of those things where learning more of the SecOps, you provided a great platform to kind of really dissect and really try to get the hands-on experience inside of Azure. Because I've also taken your other course at like course uh, careers for your uh, SOC role. So like this, the SOC internship. So that's where I kind of like learned the majority of my foundations. But when you kind of piggybacked into the instant response type thing, it was like, oh, wow, I can actually use what I had already that you provided, piggyback off of that, and kind of really transition into my career job now. Hey everybody, today's interview is with a guy named Eric. He was a member of the Cyber Range. He went through and did all the stuff, built a great resume, and then landed a nice position as a security engineer at a managed security service provider. And he kind of talks about his journey, like how many jobs he applied to and all that. So definitely check it out. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Josh Matikor, a cybersecurity YouTuber and owner of the Cyber Range. Then we have Eric here who is a Cyber Range member and he did a bunch of stuff and ended up getting a new security job and he agreed to come and talk to us about it. So thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate it. You're welcome, Josh. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so if you don't mind, do you want to do like introduction uh, of yourself and like what you're doing prior to landing this role? Sure. So my name is Eric Noga. I currently was a system administrator in my previous role. And during that time, I got to learn more about how the infrastructure works, more about Active Directory, uh, how it kind of really pertains to like a retail environment before getting into my security role. I currently uh, just finished my undergrad last year and currently could pursuing a master's degree. So I believe that the master's program that I'm currently taking aligns with the job that I'm currently doing. And it's one of those things where it kind of helped me transition into getting into cybersecurity quicker due to the fact that I kind of have a better understanding of like what it actually entails to be in cybersecurity. Gotcha. And then what's your job title? I don't think I actually asked that, like the cyber job. So like my official job title is a security engineer. Okay. Do you know, is it in the security operations space or more of a governance or do you... So it actually is more of the security sector. So I'm actually doing a lot of SOC analyst role, like an incident response threat hunting type role, um, along with vulnerability management. So it's like your traditional all in one. Uh, I kind of work for an MSP environment. So it's one of those things where it's like all hands on deck, but kind of like we have a small team. So we're kind of outputting a lot of clients. So it's one of those gotcha. things is a great learning curve for me, especially coming into cybersecurity because I get my foot wet. I got to learn new tools, new way of thinking, and it's kind of pretty great to be in this opportunity. Opportunity. Okay, that's so that's so interesting. So you have like a, basically a lot of clients and you're doing kind of security as a service for them? Yeah. So do they all have like a different tech stack or do they kind of like use your company's technology or have so you know? that's a great question. Um, some they do apply for like our certain stack, right? So we have like Huntress, we have Sentinel One, we have a seam which is like a connect wise seam. Um, so kind of more like the connect wise atmosphere, but also they do have realistic EDR platforms, but okay. that doesn't take away from some others like some may have crowd strike and some may have like rapid seven so it really depends and for the like the vulnerability side we use uh, nessus so it's one of those things where it's kind of great because mm -hmm. as you teach in the cyber range program that you can actually utilize that whereas i kind of mm -hmm. use that on a day-to-day -day. so it's kind of mm -hmm. nice to actually have that real life exposure cool okay so like you're using nessus at work that's interesting so did you go through the vulnerability management stuff in the cyber range and is it kind of similar in any sense or can you speak it, to it yeah it really is so it's one of those things i wasn't able to fully finish through the course but for the most part as much as i went through it's kind of like the exact thing so it's kind of like everything that you do teach so it's kind of nice where when you sit inside of like the interview you actually have the basic understanding and you can actually have a competent conversation whereas a lot of other people are like is this guy really blowing smoke is he not how, how do i really tell so gotcha yeah that's that's really cool so you went through the cyber range and i'm assuming you did a bunch of other stuff so can i can i ask about like the cyber range and then what else you did sure after that so how long did you spend in the cyber range and like what stuff did you cover if you remember yeah so what i actually went through for the cyber range is i kind of really honed in the instant response and the stock analyst i brought so it's one of those things where learning more of the sec ops you provided a, a great platform to kind of really dissect and really try to get the hands-on experience inside of azure because i've mm -hmm. also taken your other course at like course uh careers for your uh sock role so like this the sock internship so that's where mm -hmm. i kind of like learned the majority of my foundations but when you kind of piggybacked into like the instant response type thing i was like oh wow i can actually used what I had already that you provided kind of mm -hmm. piggyback off of that and really transition into my career job now because I'll be honest like my day-to-day -day task is kind of clearing out the ticket queue doing the mm -hmm. incident response fixing the, the malware threats you know phishing emails that mm -hmm. come in so it's one of those things where it's kind of great sure. 
cool. And then what else did you like take any other courses or have any other certifications like before you started applying? So that's a great question. I'll be honest. I was trying to be that, that paper guy, just trying to collect certifications and try to do the free ones first because, you know, when you're not making a lot of money at first, it's kind of it's kind of hard because you try to justify like, getting the Security Plus course, the Google certificate. Then I was getting identity access management certs that I spent like twelve hundred dollars out of pocket. And for yeah. me, it's like, why am I really chasing that where I just need to understand on actually how to do the position or how to do the job? And then when I try to transition from, hey, I need to stop chasing paper, I need to start chasing the actual how to do that the work. And once I try to figure that out, I kind of reverse engineer that way. I'm like, okay, so if I was to get into this position what are the day-to-day -day tasks that I would be working on and I'll try to kind of work into that um so it's kind of one of those things where I had to kind of figure it out all by myself it kind of sucked I'll be honest with you in, in my previous role I kept on asking people like because they worked in cybersecurity, and mm. I just kept getting shut down I kept getting not the great answers I kept on asking people and it got to a point where people are getting annoyed with me because I'm like I'm eager to learn I want to learn and let me just like kind of see like what's the day-to-day -day like right as a person that's going through school that's what you kind of want to know right i'm making a yeah. career out of this my next 20 30 years i want to know exactly what i'm doing and if i'm not then am i in the wrong business so gotcha and yeah sorry to hear that i've heard that other people trying to shadow people at work and they're just like not having it for whatever reason like for for what it's worth when i was working at microsoft i kind of saw something similar to that and i also saw people like bribing them because like everyone's like kind of busy and i literally seen my manager like bribe someone with alcohol to like uh, <laughs> have a meeting with her or something like that so that might be like yeah. an idea give them uber for a week <laughs> or uber eats i don't know but yeah it's great and i was willing to pay too so it's one of those things like free lunch let me ask some basic questions so I have a better understanding. Because that's my thing, right? I didn't really know what career or where I wanted to go in cybersecurity. So that was mm. the most challenging part for me because I was trying to figure out on how or what I wanted to do. Because in cyberspace, you have the blue team, you have the red team, you kind of understand the purple team or like the GRC space where it's like, do I just want to sit behind a computer, do some audit, compliance stuff, working with frameworks, or do I want to be like in the grunt work as like a blue defensive person doing SOC analyst, incident response, threat hunting that type or have a passion for pen testing so that's one of those things where i kind of like pen testing i enjoy it but also one of those things is that i don't want to just sit there and just put a report together then give it to somebody like i like the nitty-gritty stuff but mm. also at the same time it's i'm grateful for the opportunity that i do have now and i'm really loving it so oh cool i'm glad to hear that do you remember like or how many jobs did you have to apply to or did they like reach out to you Oh, God. All right. So it's kind of a, a lot to unpack here because I honestly, <laughs> I will be that person. Your YouTube videos actually did help me because I didn't understand the structure of like actually how to create like an S tier resume and like actually how to apply for like networking roles. Try to basically understand on how to take away. How do I get to this position with the, the proper format that, that you laid out? I applied to, I would say, over seven, 800 jobs, I'll be honest oh, with you. Okay. I was a frequent applier. Then it got to a certain point after keep tweaking, tweaking, tweaking. Then I realized then you popped out your YouTube video that everyone's watching. Please go check that out. Highly recommend. Definitely will save your life, your time, and you'll actually understand on how to get to where you need to be with that. So I do appreciate that. So after mm -hmm. that, kind of made it a little bit easier. I did hop on a couple mentorship calls to try to really tweak my resume to see like what's used and what's not used used and one of the things was I was putting my date my graduate when I graduated from my bachelor's degree I found that was a hack because apparently that was a contributing factor because some people don't want a brand new person out of school oh, for whatever wow. reason so I definitely found that oh interesting I never even thought about that I sometimes like remove it to avoid a like ageism in dating yourself like yep. if it's you know like but I never thought to like you know include it to show that it's recent I, I learned that so it was kind of one of those things has someone because I'm turning 30 this year so it's one of those things like I'm not fresh 18, 22 year old. So it's like I've been in IT for a little bit. So it's kind of like a bummer. Cause I've been doing system administration roles for a very long time, but it's one of those things I was like, why am I not able to pivot into this? Gotcha. And just the resume change was like significant enough to see you getting more interviews. Yeah. I, and I will also say is the cybersecurity projects that you also laid out definitely 100% highly recommend anybody to go through practical projects. I believe that is the main reason why I got hired in my current role is because I've actually had practical projects and I actually could talk about them. So it was kind of great in that regards. 
Oh, nice. Uh, did the, did they ask you about it like in the interview at all? Like, your oh, projects? they did. They okay. they definitely did. It was one of those things where it was kind of like I didn't even feel like an interview process. It was more like, tell me a little bit about yourself. Who are you? What are your goals? So tell me about like the stuff that you've been working on. And then when you go like into high detail of the project that you worked on, they can show that if you're passionate about it. And one of those things is that when I was in the interview process, I showed passion and I wanted to learn and I was very eager about it. Okay. And then for that interview, did you have at the same company, like many interviews with many people or you just had one interview and they like... For my current role, um, what had happened was actually, it was kind of a, a terrible story that came out pretty good. I end up separating ways, I believe, on that Tuesday for my current role. Then afterwards, I made a post in on LinkedIn. I highly recommend anybody that's going to school for your master's program or bachelor's, please reach out and connect to all of your peers because that's what kind of got me this position. I made a great detailed post. Once I made that post, I then had someone reach out to me and they referred me since I was a student at a private institution called Quinnipiac University here in Connecticut. And that actually got some highlight and a president of the company reached out to me directly and say, hey, we have an open position are you interested? And that kind of set the ball into my court saying, hey, all right, cool. I need to start looking for jobs. This is kind of great. With that being said, it kind of came back into my core and I was like, all right, cool. So let's see where this pursues. And lucky enough, here I am talking to you about this. So it's pretty great. Oh, cool. Congrats. Well, thank you. And do you notice, I don't know if you will notice this yet, but a lot of the times when somebody like applies to a lot of jobs and they get hired, there's like a lag time for the jobs that you apply to. So people like kind of reach out to you like afterwards to get interviews have you started seeing any of that yet yes i did and so it's kind of like it's a bummer you know because one of those things where it is what it is i i do remember applying for jobs and they had me take some technical exam but like technical format of like what they wanted i remember mm. uh, doing for like a school system at one time uh earlier last year as just keep applying to roles they mm. had me do like a nessus scan then do an nmap scan they kind of give a debrief and i was like i'm kind of uh, not at that level yet. I'm trying to like entry level to early on career. I don't think I should be doing stuff for that, but luckily that didn't work out. But gotcha, gotcha. Well, any interview practice is like kind of good practice because it expands your consciousness for what's possible in the future interviews. Kind of, thing. yeah, definitely does. Yeah, cool. So. Uh, I'll ask kind of two questions for people who are thinking about joining the cyber range. Is there like what specific thing you think that they should pay attention to that really helped you? I will say is that go through the course two, three times, like how you preach. Cause that way, when you sit inside that interview, you actually have a better understanding of what's going on. And then you can actually talk about your experience. Whereas that's what the hiring manager wants to hear. They want to hear how you fixed a problem or how you worked through a problem. They don't like problems unless there's solutions that come with it. So okay. once you really kind of configure that out, you can kind of set yourself up for success. And basically you would have to kind of really note that what cloud service that you really want to go into, right? Because like you said, Azure is probably the most, if not used along with AWS. So do you want to learn AWS or do you want to learn Azure? For me, ever since you have a course, I've been kind of sticking to Azure and it kind of paid off. So now I know how to use all of their, the different options that they offer, right? So I know how to use Microsoft Centennial Microsoft Defender, Microsoft Entra. I learned a little bit about how Intune works and the autopilot feature in my current role. So it's like for me learning on how to tie it all together, that can make me a better cybersecurity engineer because I know how things work. And when you have that mentality going in of saying, hey, I know how things work, a hiring manager could see that. Gotcha. Thanks. And then the second part is like, um, not related to me or cyber range or anything, but for the people who want to get into cybersecurity and the economy is like possibly kind of tough right now. Do you have like any kind of advice for them? Yes. Never give up on your dreams. Never give up just because you had one bad day. Keep filling out applications. Keep putting in the work. And I'll be honest, the, the most important part is keep doing practical projects. That's probably the most s significant part of doing cybersecurity is learning how projects work and just post a GitHub account. Be friendly on LinkedIn. Make network connections because that's what kind of will actually get you hired. I would also kind of recommend going to frequent events like a cybersecurity summit in your state. Besides, go through other conferences. I know the ISC2, they have monthly meetings in, inside of like a webinar at your own state. So it's one of those things I definitely recommend doing all of those. It's kind of one of those things where you can't do one without the other. You kind of have to kind of combine them all and just keep putting your best foot forward. Cool. Thanks for that. And I think that's really good advice. It's like, because you don't know 
what it's going to come in the most handy, I guess, in the future. So yep. you kind of have to pay attention to like a lot of areas and just be consistent. So I, I totally am on board with, with that. So great. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much for the interview. Really appreciate it for sure. It's going to help people. So thank you so much for taking the time. Of course, Josh. Thank you for having me. And the, the door is always open. So if you ever want to reconnect, please let me know. Um, I'd be more than happy than jump on another call in a couple of months to let them know like what I'm actually doing, what I'm working on. So it's one of those things where it's kind of great because I'm now in my early career where I get to actually expand my knowledge. So it's kind of great. Yeah, that's dope. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Josh.